Okay, is there sound now? Do we have sound now? Any sound, guys? Any sound? Any sound, guys? Is there sound? Is there sound? Yep, all clear. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kenneth, how are you doing, boss? How are you doing, boss? Uh, okay. Excellent. Good. Okay, guys. So, uh, this week I put out a poll. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse me. I have a bit of a flu over here. So, we're going to we're going to push on. We're going to push on. Um, so this week I put out a, a bit of a poll. I said uh 
between pilot training, career, hangar talk, and comment other, uh, which one do you want to talk about the most? And um, I think 69% of who, who voted had said uh, pilot training, which is interesting. Um, so let's, I will initiate the discussion on on that topic and perfect I, I can yeah the comments are coming in really slow yes we have sound okay i will initiate a discussion on that topic and then along the way if you guys have any questions just uh, send out a message like i said there's a bit of a delay between the chat on my side and uh, and then on the chat on on, on your side so and put my phone on silent here. There we go. Okay. Great. Yes, we have sound. Yes. Okay, so now um pilot training. Where does it all begin? Where does it all begin? Right? Um for some of you here, as you know, it starts with something called a private uh, pilot license, a PPL. And a PPL uh, of course, starts off with there. There are certain minimum requirements to uh, to do in order to obtain a license uh, during the training. Uh, of course, what one should uh, touch on are the entry requirements to begin your training. And and actually, there's been a bit of a a myth going around. I saw a Facebook post uh, this this week. And that post, um, that post had said, guys, it's easy to get your uh, pilot license. It's just like a, it's just like a driver's license. Uh, you don't need any credentials or, or any um, matric, or you know, any uh, high school certificate to to enter. Now, <laughs> uh, that's the 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 wording is a bit uh, off you know the wording is a bit off so to get your pilot license to get your private pilot license you don't necessarily need uh, a a high school certificate you don't you don't need a matric certificate fabulous however if you want to if you're going into pilot training for uh to for a job right professionally you want to be become a professional pilot um, then you will actually find, and I, I have to give a props up to Sipo. Uh, I don't know if you, if you guys know Sipo. Uh, he's he's also well. He's actually quite a um, a famous pilot here in 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 South Africa. You will see him on uh, quite of the few uh, TV programs as well or, or radio shows. So Sipo had uh, put out a post to say, "Hey guys, no, 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 no." <laughs> uh, don't believe that what this this person is saying that you can you can uh you only need you, or you don't need any um high school certificate you just need to get your, the, the licenses itself and then you're you're good you're good to go and 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 then you can go apply to any form of employer and 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 uh, any form of uh, airline or air operator and they said okay that's fine come and join and let's fly. Uh, no, that's not it. So Sipo had put out a couple of um, um, screenshots of uh, some of the employers uh, here in South Africa. So you have uh, who Airlink, right? You have Airlink. Uh, you also have um, Saf Air, and who else had uh, put out a uh, Sem Air as well? And in in those requirements, I'm gonna see. If I'll be able to to bring it up for you, actually, so I'm gonna work on this. Um, on the meantime, uh, okay, so your your question just came in. I know you sent it a few minutes ago, but your question just came in. I will come to it. Okay, so they in the advertisement uh, or for the, the 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 job ad, sorry, for a first officer, for any one of these uh, operators, one of the first things that they will say is you need a grade twelve certificate. Okay, you will need a grade 
12 certificate. It's as simple as that. Uh, and without it, um, it, it, it'd be very difficult to convince them otherwise, unless you've gotten any other form of education. <coughs> you have to excuse me. The flu has gotten one here. Okay, so... Guys, basically, it's important if you're in high school. If you're in high school in South Africa um, and you're doing matric, get your grade 12 certificate uh, before and 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 then before coming to do your your pilot training. Uh, the earliest age you can do that is the age of, as in the earliest age you can start your pilot training. Uh, I would say 16 and a half. The earliest age you can get your pilot license is 17. So, uh, training can take between three to six months. Uh, to to get done so if you started at 16 and a half then we could just pretty much say okay by the age of 17 you can you can get your license <coughs> okay so now let me get to this uh to the to girl's question actually i think the biggest nightmare for an aspiring aviator like me is finance and all the different routes that one can take due to financial uh, constraints yeah, that is very true. That is very true. That is a lot of people. That is uh, definitely a lot of people. So, um, I did tell you guys uh, last time that there are two um, or three uh, bursary opportunities you can apply for. And actually, one of them just opened up, uh, ATNS. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get out the, um, uh, I'm going to try and see if I can get it on the screen. Let us see if we can actually figure uh, that out. In the meantime, ATNS has put out um, that bursary application. You can, and I believe the deadline might be the 28th of uh, February. It actually might be the 28th of February. I'll pull it up and see if, if I can actually get the, the correct date. So either the twenty eighth of February or or the or sometime in March. Go to the ATNS website. Go to the ATNS website. Apply. If you're South African, apply. Guys, an air traffic controller is a critical skill. It's in high well, I, I'm not gonna use the word high demand, but it is it is needed. It is needed, and it's not only needed in South Africa. It's actually needed quite across, uh, quite across Africa. So, <laughs> so apply, guys. It's a bursary. They'll pay for your training, and if you become an air traffic controller, then you will be able to get a remuneration. You'll be able to get a salary, and with that salary, you can save money. Please, guys, save. Don't get black tax affect your life. I know there's a lot of black tax here in um. Well, there's black tax all across Africa, but uh, sorry, black tax is is prevalent here, is it not? So, so, um, <laughs> and you know what I mean by black tax, where you have family members saying, "Hey, this is the only person who's got a, a decent job." Now you got to take care X, Y, Z, uh, or back to A, B, C, D, uh, so and so person, mang mang, uh, so and so's uh, relative, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's 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 part of life. It's part of life. It's it's the responsibilities that one that one has, but there is a limitation. There are there are boundaries that one has to uh, put in place in order to be able to further your your uh, your career. So, ATNS apply for it. Okay. So now, second question: Are there subjects that one has to excel in? Does one have to be good at uh, geography, maths? Um, and uh, let me try and do this. Okay, geography, maths, over and above just the matric certificate. I would say yes. You know, you don't need any... Legally, you don't need any uh, subjects to, to start your pilot training. However, to help you along your training, uh, to help you uh, get started, to help you better understand certain topics that you're going to be learning... It will be important uh, to study up in, uh, in in geography. It will be important uh, to study up in maths, definitely. And it will be important to study up in science. Um, so, so for some of you, maybe in high school, 
uh, that that science is split into either physics, uh, physics, biology, or chemistry, then it would be useful for you uh, to uh, to take physics, uh, chemistry. You know, there's fuel in a plane, but how much? <laughs> How much of, of fuel do you, uh, how in depth of fuel do you need to understand, um, right? So okay, so I would say physics or science, um, geography and maths um, in high school. So now let's see if I'll be able to bring up uh, that ATNS um, ad. The other bursary or other organization that you can apply to. I'm going to type it here in the chat. <coughs> Tita. Okay. Tita. Again, this is for South Africa, uh, naturally. Uh, Tita. Uh, I believe it's tertiary, tertiary education. I can't remember what it stands for. But if you go to their website, they also have a bursary. And they ha their bursary takes you all the way to... Uh, all the way to... Um, uh, to CPL, Commercial Pilot License. Okay? So, apply to TETA, uh, apply to to ATNS, and get those bursaries and start, start training. Start training. Just start. Okay? Okay, I found, I found the, the, the page. So, it says, ATNS bursaries, you have a choice, and the closing date is the 28th of February 2023, guys. Uh, 28th of February 2023. So, you have three options, right? You have three options. The first one is uh, aeronautical, uh, the three choices of, uh, uh, of training, right? Aeronautical Information Management Officer. So, that's AIMO. And then the second one is Air Traffic uh, Services Officer. ATSO, and then the third one is Airport Management Center Liaison Officer. I believe the Airport Management Center Liaison Officer, you'll probably be, you'll probably be at uh, OR Tambo. Okay, oh, there we go. Okay, so to apply, you go to the website, oh, that's a bit odd, but you go to the website uh, ZA, that looks a bit odd, let me, let me just double check just to make sure this is not a false link. But it says here, zabursaries.co.za. I'm going to put it in the chat as well. Za uh, bursaries. Bur yeah, guys, spelling. <laughs> spelling. Bursaries.co.za. <laughs> there we go. Zabursaries.co.za. Okay. I'm also going to look for the ad itself. In fact, I'm going to go to this website right now, ZA Bursaries, bursaries.co.za, just to make sure that it's not uh, something uh, dodgy. Okay, flying jurist. There we go. Okay, so those are the two opportunities that you have there ATNS and TETA. ATNS and TETA. Apply, apply, apply. Okay, so let's go back to the, 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 the training aspect. Um, of things so um, PPL PPL is the first step private pilot license and remember guys when we say private pilot license we we don't mean that uh, you're going to be go f you're going to go and fly a private jet okay we are not going to be going to fly a private jet a, a, a PPL all a private pilot license means is that you have the privilege to go. Uh, you can rent a plane, or you can uh, you can um, uh, rent a plane or uh, buy a plane if you want, and fly it around, and 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 not be paid for it. Okay, you can't be paid for it. Uh, however. Uh, if you now want to start working as a pilot, but like I said, you would need it. You would need a private pilot license in order uh, to get your commercial pilot license. And 
The reason being is because the most common path of becoming a pilot is the modular route. Okay, it's a modular route. The modular route means that you, you're taking subjects, you're passing subjects in uh, in uh, stages, right? There is a path called an integrated route where there are very few schools. I think, I, in fact, I only know one or two schools in South Africa that do the integrated route. But the integrated route is actually, it's it's a lot more expensive. However, it's it's uh, it's faster, I believe. It's faster. Ooh, I apologize. I have a cold. This is live. This is live, and we have to sort ourselves out. The realities of a live show. Oh, well. Okay. So, um, what was I saying? I was saying that you have the integrated route, and... Uh, the integrated route is a slightly faster, but it is more expensive. And the hourly requirement to get the commercial pilot license with the integrated route is um, less than the modular route. The integrated route, you only need uh, 200 hours of, to of total flying time before you can go and test. Whereas the modular route, you need about 240 to 250 hours. You can test at 200 hours, but it all depends on what you've done the the type the type of flying that you've done prior to the two hundred hours, okay. So uh, please, if you have any questions on on that type of training, please put it in the chat. I will continue and continue on discussion about discussing about it, and then w whenever the question does pop up, I'll just uh, go back. I'll go back to that. Okay. All right. Great. So, uh, to conclude, integrated route. 200 hour requirement modular route uh, between 240 and 250 hours okay and the reason being is that the, the main difference sorry is that you're doing your what is called an instrument rating and what does an instrument rating mean an instrument rating means you can go and fly into the clouds and you don't have to look outside you're only looking at the uh, instruments okay you're only looking at the instruments so instrument rating is something that you would typically in the modular route you would typically start at 200 hours and the instrument rating can take about 45 hours um, of flying right 45 hours of flying that's why that's why they say that in the modular route usually you would test at 240 uh, to 250 um, hours okay i have found the image of the bursary i'm gonna try i'm gonna put it up now so you're not gonna see me but you're gonna see the uh the bursary okay so there we go that is the bursary right i hope you you can you can see it clearly you can take a screenshot uh of it um so you can see it says you have three choices and the closing date is the 20th of February. Now the big question of course is what are the what what will be the the what will be the requirements. So let's go to this website. Uh, I've gone to uh, bursaries South Africa. Let's see if we can uh bring it up on uh on the screen. I will do that now. Okay. And we're going to add a certain window capture. Yep. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. And we will. Yes. That's exactly what we want to choose. All right. So here we go. So we are at the uh, website. And now I'm going to go. Uh, go to the website and uh, so okay so it says bursary south africa home closing soon etc 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 let's go to closing soon oh, we have a nice advertisement here and let's see march there's one closing in march uh, february bursary is closing in february let's click on that good this looks like a very dodgy website by the way <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know if I I don't know if if I trusted. All right, okay, here we go. Okay, so I guess it's just the it's it's basically an index website of all the um Okay, there we go. ATNS bursaries. Uh closing soon. Let me just double check and make sure that it's still pitching up. There we go. Okay, ATNS bursaries closing soon. We've loaded it. And let's have a look at what it says. Okay, about the bursary provider, ATNS, obviously we should know. ATNS is the air traffic navigation services company. They provide all air traffic services. Uh, I'm actually not reading anymore. They provide air traffic services not only for South Africa, but they provide it for the Indian Ocean as well as the At Atlantic Ocean. It's actually quite a big proportion. They also actually also they also cover uh, certain parts of the uh, Antarctica. So uh, I don't know if you know, guys. There are a couple of flights. I'm just gonna temporarily uh, switch back to the. Um, main camera there we go okay so i don't know if you guys know but there, there are a couple of flights out of cape town go figure there are a couple of flights out of cape town which you can fly to antarctica if you so want to i don't know how much those those tickets are going for but if you want to go to antarctica there's your opportunity okay so that's why atns well not that's why but atns recognizes that there is some traffic air traffic going between um South Africa and, and Antarctica and not only South Africa there are some flights that transition from Europe which actually go to uh, Antarctica so that's uh, hence why HNS does cover that particular region so let's go back to this website <coughs> okay so let's see Right, so it says, let's see about the eighteen about the eighteen S bursary program. I am learning this at the same time as you are. Okay, we understand that we want to look at the we want to look at the requirements. It doesn't seem to even state what the. There we go. They are the requirements. So you need to number one, you must be a South African citizen. Number two, you must be eighteen years or older. So I, hey guys, how old are you? How old are you, eh? How old are you? Guys, guys, be honest here. Be honest. You can have a... Your name... These might not even be your name, so you can be honest. How old are you guys? If you're older than 18, great. If if not, uh, you're going to have to you're gonna have to wait a little bit. Okay, so... um, You have to be older than 18. Right, so you must be a South African citizen. You must be 18 years or older. You must have completed matric, you see... What I'm saying here, <laughs> you must have completed matric. You can't just leave and and then go and try and, and do your pilot training. You must have achieved a minimum result, uh, HGD or SGC for pure mathematics and English and matric. You must be medically fit. Oh, let's touch on that. <coughs> Let us touch on that. Okay, medically fit. What what do you guys think it means by medically fit? You can, you can. In fact, I'm gonna ask that question now. I'm gonna give you guys five minutes, and you can put in the comments below what do you think it means by uh, medically fit, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, what does it mean by medically fit? That's going to be the question for the next five minutes. What does it mean to be medically fit? Okay, next it says, interesting, students with disabilities are encouraged to apply and will be given preference in line with the employment equity plan. Okay, good, fair enough. Uh, that's fine. I mean, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, being a pilot, you you, you do require certain uh, motor skills, meaning you, your, your body needs to be able to move in a certain way so yeah that's that's the reality of it uh, then it says students from designated groups as per the employment equity act of 1998 are encouraged to apply i imagine they mean by black <laughs> um uh and then indian and then within that category on top would be if you're black and female or an indian and female oh sorry black uh, indian and uh um, colored yes okay okay then let's see what else they 
Oh, so each each row has their own requirements, as we can see. Um, let's look at the second one. And the second one seems to have a... No, the third one, sorry. The third one seems to have the highest amount of requirements. So it says... Okay, this African citizen, fine. 18 years, matric, good. Good communication skills. What does that mean? What does good communication skills mean? Okay. Um... Essentially, are you able to, when they say uh, communication skills, they're actually talking about soft skills here. Uh, I'm sure, um, I am sure, Kenneth, you can, you can um, tell us <laughs> about soft skills in, 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 in your industry. Okay. Soft skills. What do we mean by, by, by soft skills? Uh, essentially read the room okay read the room uh be professional uh, and that means um always try to be uh initially always try to be kind uh to, to people always try to communicate clearly um what you're trying to say right and um when being professional that that includes skills like written communication skills uh speaking communication skills so that's that's on the that's on the phone that's uh by email um not many people write letters at this point in time but let's say let's say for example you go to a meeting uh be welcoming yes thank you very much yes be welcoming you 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 definitely need to be welcoming uh n number 1 um and so you're welcoming uh yeah so be welcoming uh, have the ability to and you know what i'm going to write these down as well um so so soft skills you need to have email writing skills you know note taking note taking is so important important Note taking is definitely an important aspect. Uh, phone, uh, phone skills, and what do we mean by phone skills? I mean, let's say for example, whoever you you work for, be able to read and write and at least speak fluent English. I mean, that's that is definitely in the oh yes, in the aviation world. Oh, that's actually so important. Uh, thank you, Kenneth, for bringing that up. Um, some of you might think, well, okay, yes, that's obvious. But guys, it is, it is, it is very important language, and understanding what an individual is saying is is very important. By that, I mean the perception. Uh, do you have the same perception as the individual that is communicating in aviation? Aviation. Uh, just like the medical, in well, I, I don't know if it, we can say just like, but I suppose <laughs> there are a lot of similarities in aviation. Similarly to the medical industry, th this is a life and death situation, correct? Particularly if you're an air traffic controller, right? What you say can determine the survival of an aircraft uh, in the air. As an air traffic controller, what you say as a pilot, what you communicate when you communicate your position, what you what you communicate uh, your intentions, uh, can be very vital to the life of the people on board, including your life. If you miscommunicate your position, if you miscommunicate your intentions, you could very much so cause a, a fatal situation. By that, I mean you could create a collision course with another aircraft you can uh create a situation where air traffic control is not prioritizing you and uh, you have limited fuel in the air you know you can't just stop for fuel in the air there's no fuel stations in the air unless you're a fighter jet and fighter jets have fuel stations in the air so to speak but we're not fighter pilots here <laughs> so there are no fuel stations there if you if you miscommunicate that you are in emergency situation where you have limited amount of fuel and you need to land, and and that that that's happened in the past. It's happened in the past that 
uh, there was one, I think it was in the US, and there was a flight from uh, Latin America, from South, and South America. And so I think only one person on board the, the aircraft was able to speak uh, English. Yes, there was only one person on board the aircraft who was able to speak English. Uh, everyone else could only speak Spanish, Espanol, right? So they were coming in to approach, I don't know what city it was. I don't know if it was New York or Boston or I, I, I don't know. It was winter. It was it was cold. The visibility was bad. Uh, and then uh, the air traffic controller told them, uh, please, please hold. Basically, enter a holding pattern. A holding pattern looks like a... Let's see if I can draw it like that, okay? A holding pattern somewhat looks looks like that, okay? So it's like a racetrack. It's a racetrack pattern. And you're basically told to hold and to wait uh, for our traffic to land. And so the, the, the one pilot that spoke English, uh, I, I think he said, okay, we have limited fuel, so just take that into consideration. However, he did not communicate the urgency of how limited the fuel uh, was. So, as they were holding, the, the, this pilot kept on saying, hey, you know, we're limited fuel, we're limited fuel. And then the other pilots in the plane who were flying, they were saying to the, the pilot who spoke English, what's going on? Why isn't air traffic control allowing us to land? We don't have enough fuel. What's happening? Don't they, don't they understand? So they kept on going. And then eventually, air traffic control was like, okay, uh, Lima, whatever, whatever the, the call sign was. Let's call them Lima 1, 2, 3. Lima 1, 2, 3. You're clear to descent and uh, you're cleared for the ILS approach runway, whatever, whatever. Runway 2, 9. Let's call it that. And uh, and they started to descend, and then they they entered the approach path for uh, for the runway. And so, once they entered the approach path, um, one one of the engines started to to you know shut down. Why? It was shutting down because it was running out of fuel. Uh, so they had four engines in total. So one engine shut down. Two got. Okay, they're still flying and say, okay, maybe we have enough to, to make it uh, to the runway. So they continue the approach, they continue the approach. Two, second engine goes off. Two, third, two, fourth, gone. So, what happens? They fell short of the runway, they crashed, pilots died, some people died, some people survived. All because of a miscommunication. And in fact, air traffic control at the time, did not even recognize that they had crashed. They thought, oh, maybe they went around. Uh, we'll get back to them. So it was only a few hours later that they realized, oh, they actually crashed. Okay. Ah, oh, gosh, a cold, guys. This is so bad. Okay. So communication. English is very important. Let's look at the next, um, the next uh, uh, requirement. I have to now open up the website myself. All right, here we go. So communication skills, English speaking skills is very important. Next one, it says you must have good spatial reasoning ability. Let's talk about that. Okay. Good spatial reasoning ability. Uh, what does that mean to have a... What, what, is, what does spatial mean? Firstly, let me talk about uh, spatial awareness. Uh, let me talk about spatial awareness. And guys, if, if there's anything that you want to ask, you mu I must ask. If there's anything that doesn't make sense, you must say. But let's let's have a look uh, at what they are saying about uh, spatial reasonability. Okay, so if it, this is the pers this is the perception I I take it in aviation. Um, you have it, your you're in a 3D environment. You're not in a 2D environment. And what do I mean by that? I mean, if you're driving a car, right? You're driving a car and you, you're you only controlling um, uh, two dimensions. And by that, I mean you're turning to the right or you're turning to the left. You're going forward or you're going backwards. Okay? So you're essentially c controlling 
two dimensions, so to speak. In the air, you can go up or down. You can go to the right, you can go to the left. Not only by rolling to the right or rolling to the left, but you can, what we call, like a ship. You know how, like a ship, they would use their rudder on a ship. So the ship would yaw to the left and yaw to the right, right? You can do that on a, in a plane as well. You can yaw to the left and you can yaw to the right. Uh, Willie says, sorry, I can't stay. I'm at work. I'll watch later. Keep up the good work. Okay, Willie. Uh, thank you very much for joining in. My word, you're at work. Um, thank you. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm saying thank you, but, you know, um, good job on you. Um, you know, it's, it's late for you. Well, I, I don't know. Actually, I don't even know where you're, if you are, which part of the world. <laughs> but thank you for that. Thank you for joining in, Willie, and we'll, we'll, we'll catch you in the next one. We'll catch you in, in the next two weeks. And hopefully I will not have a cold at that time. Huh? We'll catch in the next two weeks. Okay, so you have a rudder, right? That's one dimension. You have a... Uh, hey, Tiro! Good evening! Hey, there we go. So you have a rudder, right? Which is uh, one dimension. And then you have... Or, or one axis, as we call it. We have uh, um, something that allows the nose to, of the plane going up and down, right? We call that pitch, Okay. And then we have uh, something that makes the wings go left, uh, go right and left. We call that roll. Okay. So you're controlling three dimensions, right? And you have planes not only ahead of you. You have planes below you, above you, to the left, to the right, all sorts of directions. You've got mountains on the ground. You've got all sorts of things around you. It's a three-dimensional three environment. So if you're entering a high-density uh, area high traffic density area right you have to take into consideration of the the positions of planes you have to take into consideration the health of your aircraft you have to take into consideration the health of you, you and uh, your fellow crew members and if you have any passengers on board and so when we say uh spatial uh spatial let's bring it up spatial reasoning ability okay we are saying of all the conflict inf information that's coming in at the same time how do we prioritize this conflict in information um in order to uh, for us to have the safest outcome right how do we do that okay so that's what we mean by spatial reasoning ability look at all the conflicting factors that are happening at the same time prioritize them to whichever one needs to be solved first meaning which one needs to have which one needs to be resolved so that you are still safe okay hi there great job you're doing here thank you very much thank you very much i appreciate it i appreciate it okay so which one do you need to do uh first to keep you safe and to keep everyone else everyone else uh safe on board and to keep the plane safe and not only the people on board and the plane but also the, the 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 people are the aircraft around you the people on the ground think about it think about it um actually let me let me let me give another scenario and this is a real life scenario um i believe this was yesterday yes yesterday so there was there's an airport and some of you may already know but there's an, there is an airport here um where uh, a plane took off um as it took off the engine failed completely died it completely died gone okay now you have to what you do you have to glide right you can still fly without an engine it's just that you're not, <laughs> you're not you're not going to be able to maintain height right you're gonna you're going to be going down so engine failed completely and now you you need to decide where am i going to to land this aircraft i can't land it back on on the runway i i can only land ahead Okay, now uh, on the right hand side, I, uh, there's a couple of houses. Mm, that's not good. I I don't want to if <laughs> if if anyone's dying, let me not kill anyone else. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to land on houses, and that's going to reduce my likelihood likelihood of survival. Okay, on my left hand side, I see, I see, I see a field. 
or I see grassland or I see a highway. I say, okay, let me aim for, for, for the grassland. If I make, by making it to the grassland, at least there's nobody else around. There's no other houses. I'm not damaging people's property. I'm not hurting people's lives. So you got to think about uh, the other people as well. Now, luckily, these guys, uh, when they landed, uh, on, it was a grassland area. They, they managed to land safely. And there was only one dent on, on the plane. So they were very lucky. They were extremely lucky. And we thank, we thank goodness that they, they're, they're alive. And the plane is actually pretty much okay. So um, that is uh, what we mean by uh, spatial reasoning ability. And also actually good analytical skills because it, they, they come together. You're basically analyzing the situation to have the best outcome. Okay, you must work well within the team. I think that's clear cut. Um, yeah, you must have strong multitasking skills. Uh, in aviation, or uh, being a pilot actually, multitasking skills are related to an acronym that we call A N. Uh, no, not that one. <laughs> Aviate, navigate, uh, communicate. Okay, aviate, navigate, communicate. That's very important. Aviate, navigate, uh, communicate, and uh, Tiro, you can you can definitely talk to us about aviate, navigate, and communicate. Okay, but basically, we are saying here: prioritize your flying first. It's no good to talk to air traffic control or to talk to people. It's like you driving a car. And you prioritize, let's say driving a car is, is the aviate one, right? Uh, and then you are on your phone, which is communicating, and you're talking to people, right? There's no point in prioritizing communicating on the phone if you're now going to take your car and hit a wall or hit another car and you're going to crash and you're going to you hurt yourself really badly, okay? You first e focus on driving the car. And then you focus on navigating the car. This car has to maintain this lane. Oh, this car is, is going on this highway, then it's going to turn left on another road. Okay? So you're you focus on driving the car first, then you focus on taking the direction of where the car is going. Then you're able to communicate to other people, whether it's on the phone or whether it's the people in the car. Okay? You, you know you know how you know how when you when you when you're driving and you're a bit lost. You're a bit lost and you're like Ooh, let let me turn down the radio. Let let me turn down the music because I I I need to hear or I I need to see better by turning down the music. Uh, and and the reality the reality of that is is because you're having a sensory overload in your ears. Your ears are receiving too much uh, sound information, and so your brain is focusing more on the sound than it is on what the eyes are seeing, which is, of course, why now you're turning down the music or you're turning down the radio to, to be able to see better. Oh, I need to turn it down to see better, right? Okay. So, um, aviate uh, the plane first. And then, and, and remember, guys, we're talking about multitasking here. You aviate the plane first. Then you will deal with where the plane is going. And then if, it doesn't matter if air traffic control is on the radio. They're trying to reach you. Forget them. Forget them. You're focusing on flying. You're focusing on the, navigating the plane. So going back to the example of the guys that um, that lost an engine, right, after takeoff, the first thing that you do, you aviate. You fly at a certain um, glide speed. You pick a field, 30 degrees left or right ahead of you. You never return back to the field. Never, right? And then if you have sufficient altitude, you will fault find. You will identify the situation. You will identify, you look through the symptoms of the aircraft and see if you're able to restart the engine. If you're unable to do that, you then shut down the engine, right? And then thereafter, thereafter, um, once you be able to make the field and you apply flaps, We'll discuss what flaps are at a later point. But they basically slow down the airplane. Okay, they slow down the airplane. Uh, and then lastly, final checks, final approach onto the, the, the grassland. Secure the aircraft, okay? So you're aviating first, you're navigating, and then lastly, if you have time, you can say, hey, edge of control, oh, I'm, I'm going to be landing in the field here. 
send out the emergency services, all right? Okay, excellent. Good, we've got nine minutes left. We have nine minutes left. Tito says, turning back to the run is never an option. That's what we call the impossible turn. Exactly. It is the impossible turn. Sorry, Tito, there's a bit of a delay here. Uh, so, um, and I, hey, Tito, I don't know if you heard about that crash uh, crash yesterday. Hey, guys, there were three crashes yesterday. My word. There were three air crashes yesterday. So you have to see my face for that. There were three air crashes yesterday. Um, two of them, the crew members survived. Third one, fatality gone, uh, unfortunately. Guys, you must stay safe. It, the, the pilots in this room, the pilots in this chat, you must stay safe out there. Stay focused. Remember your procedures. Remember what you've learned. Do not do, as Tito says, do not turn back to the runway. It doesn't matter how many hours of flying time that you have. 1,000 hours, 2,000, whatever it may be. 500. I'm telling you this. The person with 2,000 hours um, is more likely to turn back to the runway than the person with, with 200 hours. I, I promise you. Uh, I promise you. Oh, you haven't been on social media, so you don't know. Okay. Do you know, hey, I, uh, maybe I'll send you that information. I'll, I'll try and find it. Um, okay. So the point is, guys, Stay focused, stay sharp, um, remember what you've been taught, remember the procedures, and stay calm as well, and just do them, and then you hope for the best. Okay, now we've got uh, eight minutes left. Let's run through the rest of the requirements uh, quickly. Um, so, right, you must have quick decision-making skills. I think that's just part of the the rest must have strong emotional intelligence. <laughs> control your emotions, guys. Don't don't get uh, control your emotions. You must be confident and have high self esteem. Okay, confidence is very important. Uh, okay, well we'll come back to that later. Students and then the last bit: students with disabilities, etc., etc., etc. All right. So <coughs> the, the 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 point is this. The point is this. Um, if you have not gotten any form of uh, office skills or working environment uh, skills yet uh, try and do internship I, I'm talking to people who are 18 or younger or, or, or just 18 uh, if you have not uh, gotten any form of like office environment skills it will help you in the aviation environment it will help you in the application for scholarships uh, and then Talking to the people who have already finished their training, people who are already flying, and people who um, are trying to build their uh, pilot career. Um, oh gosh, guys, I hate having a cold. Oh gosh, it's horrible. That's just really bad. Okay, so for for those guys, uh. I, and this is the thing I wanted to reiterate uh, every every time we go live, guys. Because it must be said and must be said each and every single time. And obviously, it's <laughs> it does require some amount of money. But do you remember? Uh, do you remember I had said that in some situations you will find people who finish off the commercial pilot license, they will... Uh, you will suddenly see them flying, um, let's call it uh, a caravan, a 12-seater aircraft, 14-seater aircraft, or you'll see them flying a uh, multi-engine aircraft, and all sorts of things. And then you'll question uh, a, a plane called like a B-1900. And I think next time, I think I have to like put up pictures of what these are, hey? For, for, the, for those of you who don't know what a B-1900 is or... Uh, uh, B nineteen hundred is it's it's in the name. It's a nineteen seater multi engine plane. It's got two engines. Okay, so um, there's some people who are straight out of flight school and they go fly these planes and you wonder, uh, how do they do that? Like, ah, and 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 I, and I can promise you, it's it's actually it's not a very common thing. But the rea the the way it, it occurs, the way it occurs is all about insurance, guys. Insurance. Insurance controls aviation. Insurance controls aviation. Uh, for example, for example, if you fly at night 
and you don't have your night rate uh, your your night rating is not valid it's not recent or whatever it may be that will nullify the insurance uh and then basically uh operators with airplanes and if you rent out an airplane will say hey you can't fly because well obviously you can't fly because you don't have a night rating but <laughs> But it's an example. I think, let me give another example. Let's say, let us say you have your night rating. You're, you're legal to fly at night. You're flying at night and you're coming into land. And then suddenly, hey, load shedding. Welcome, load shedding. Load shedding happens. And then the runway lights go off. Poof, gone. You can't see. You can't see where the runway is. You can't land. Uh, and, but then, poof, the generator kicks in. The running lights come back on. Now there might be a technical technicality in the in the in, in insurance policy that states that if air traffic control tells you go around, meaning or, or deviate uh, to a, to an alternate air, air, airfield, legally, insurance might say eh, you didn't listen to air traffic control. Uh, therefore, if anything did happen to the plane, we will not pay. We will not pay. So insurance controls so many things. And the point I'm trying to get to is this. If you want to fly a turbine aircraft, which is like a turboprop or a jet engine airplane, and you apply to any operator that has these planes, right? And then they say, the employer will say to you, oh, you can't, sorry, you don't have the experience. That's not what they mean. They don't mean that you don't have the experience. What they're saying is that the insurance company is not going to pay for you to be uh, to to cover you for you flying this plane because you don't have the minimum turbine requirement turbine hours requirement to fly it which in most cases is 50 hours for a B-1900 or a C-208 caravan right so what you can what you what you would say to employer and like I, I said this last time what you can say to the employer is this uh, the, the insurance company doesn't care um, doesn't care if you're able to pay for that premium, everything has a price. Money controls everything, right? So if you pay the premium, I see we have two minutes left. If we pay the premium, then uh, uh, then you, they will the employer will technically say, hey, okay, you can fly. Um, and and that premium, you know, depending on the plane, but we're looking in the hundreds of thousands here. We're looking at a hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand. Um, but you you can structure it in such a way where you're saying, okay, my uh, some of the payment of the premium will come out of my salary, some of the payment will come out of me, and it will will pay it out in a couple of months, right? And you have to do a minimum of fifty hours. Okay, fine. So let's say three months. You probably do fifty hours in three months' time, uh, and then that's paid out, and then you no longer have to pay that premium. And then there, Bob's your uncle. You've got a you've got a full time job flying turbine aircraft, turboprop, or, or or, or or jet aircraft, okay? So that's that's what tends to happen, and that's it's just, it's kind of like a secret uh, information in uh, in the industry. I don't know why it's so secretive. I really don't don't understand. Um, okay. Now I said I would talk about the medical requirements. This is going to be the last thing, and then we call it last thing, and then we call it. So medical requirements, okay? Or medical medically fit, right? I think one of the main points I have to touch there, and, and the rest we will talk about later, but one of the main points I have to touch is the on is uh, you don't need to have 20-20 vision. You do not need to have 20-20 uh, vision. You don't. You, you need, I don't have 20-20 vision. You can see I'm wearing glasses, no? So the, the, one, the legal requirement is you must have two pairs of prescription glasses one as a redundancy and just in case the, this one breaks uh on board so you don't need to have 2020 vision you just need the glasses just need to make sure that you're able to get 2020 vision okay uh physically fit um if you'll do what is called tino knows this you do what is called a class one medical and a class one medical they're going to test your uh, your lungs um so your your breathing your breathing capabilities so to speak, um, uh, then they will test. Well, they'll test your urine if you have any drugs in the urine or any just any any form of the the um, what's the word I'm looking for deformalities or something like that. Uh, they will also test 
uh it's what's called your ekg and ecg google it <laughs> um and then what else oh your hearing they test your hearing they test your eyesight uh and they'll, then they're going to test you for your psychology meaning uh your your mental state of mind and and how easy it is for you uh to break down or how easy it is for you to get angry right so that you know what i think i need i think i should actually next time bring out the form there is a form that you have to fill in and you will see the type of questions that they ask you guys remind me for next time please to 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 show that okay we are at eight o'clock that is it uh thank you very much for joining um guys 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 uh next time i i'm gonna announce again i don't know when or maybe the week's time i don't know but i'll announce again the uh the live event which happens every it's gonna happen every two weeks uh and when i put out a post i put out a community community post and uh on that uh community post uh you can put in the questions that you want to ask you can the type of topics that you want me to talk about i've also as you can see i've put uh just down here my instagram this is actually a new handle this is going to be the handle for ls aviation i do have another handle which you can actually find also on my youtube channel um which is my name essentially uh but i want to now use this handle just specific to the content of of, of this channel so I've ha I have seen that some of you already started subscribing. So thanks for that uh, or following on Instagram. So thanks for that. Hey guys, for some of you who are not subscribed on this channel, please do subscribe. Do subscribe. It helps out. It does help out. You know, uh, and I really want to get more. I want to expose aviation to more and more people. I think it's needed. I don't think. I think there's a lot of myth and misunderstanding in it uh, about the industry. So guys. Subscribe so that other people can see the channel, uh, like the videos that I've been putting up and stuff so that other people can see the channel and, and actually demystify the industry. All right, guys. Uh, cheers. Thank you for joining in. I hope this live was a bit better than the last one. I know uh, the last one, I was just still trying to figure out things, but I think we're, we have improved in terms of uh, the layout and stuff. So hopefully next time we can also improve once more in terms of what type of content that we actually put on the on the live stream itself so thanks guys for joining in and i will catch you 